Just a few days back, the Preact JS team came up with a brand new front-end state management package called Signals, and it brings in a lot of performance benefits right out of the box, which you might not have seen in its contemporaries, which are probably context or hooks. And at this point, if you're thinking that is interesting, but I don't even use Preact, stay right till the very end of the video because whatever Signal has to offer is not specific for Preact, but it is is applicable to any platform you can run JavaScript on. Hi guys, I am Shivalik and in this video, I will tell you about what exactly the Signals package has to offer. We would also update an existing app which is already using hooks to start using Signals. We would also learn about all the methods and APIs Signal has to offer. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we want to do right now is create a Preact app. So for that, I would run this command, which is npx preact CLI create simple. And this is the name of our app. So while this installs, let me tell you guys, this video is broken down into chapters. So you can probably click on any of the chapters and jump to another segment if something else interests you more. So we are done with the installation and after that I've gone ahead and added some sample code. So let's quickly see what we have right now. So right now you can see we have this hooks demo component, which is this one and it returns a component A, which basically contains two other components B and C. So let's quickly jump to the code and see what they do. So here, if you see hooks demo is calling component A, which receives the value, which is the count and on click is a function. So it would pass the count and on click these two props to component A. So if we go to component A, we'll see it really does nothing but just pass the value again to component C, which here you can see is the yellow div which contains the button that's the component C and component B here is like just a static component it has nothing but some label which you can see here right so if we go to settings here and try to enable highlight updates whenever I do any changes our browser would outline whatever component gets repainted so in this example you can see whenever I click on the count first thing which gets painted is component A and you can also see these two divs, the blue and the yellow div, they also get individually highlighted. So basically every time you click on this button, this component A, B and C, everything is re-rendered. So let's quickly jump into this example and try to update this to start using signals. So install the signals package to our project. For that, we would do npm install at preact slash signals. Did I just say signals? Um, once this package is installed, let's quickly start our server back on. And let's import this package as well. So let's call import from react signals and what you import is a signal it's a singular so let's for a moment assume that this value is coming from a global constant right so you would probably write it something like const count equal to zero that's how you would initialize it right so signals actually lets you use a very similar syntax so for signals what we would use is the same const count equal to signal zero and now we can use this count which is now a signal value so let's quickly replace our hooks example with signals so we have already initialized so we don't need this initialization anymore the next thing which we are doing is inside our on click we are increasing the count of the current value so we have the current value in count let's get the value of the current signal count our value equal to count dot value plus one so just with this much change we have already converted our code to use signals and as you can see this is very plug and play another thing you would notice is the value here for count in case of signals we have to access them by calling the value count dot value 
maybe let's just select all the words with c hook and replace that with signals okay everything is still fine so interestingly we would see now that if i click on this one now component a and component b does not repaint anymore so we have immediately made our dummy app a little more performant now one thing to notice here is this signal which we have defined called count is just like another variable so we can probably export this and in some other part of your code you can still import this signal and uh, consume its value so how does signal exactly do it we can clearly see this count value is passed to component a and then to b and c and even though we can see that at the very top level we are updating the count the component a and b never really re-renders that is because the value of count which we pass here is not zero but an object so whenever you pass a signal value to your component instead of passing a value it always passes a reference to your object so because you are passing a reference to the object you can also imagine that you can pass really really big objects also without much performance issues so that is another reason why you have to access its value by using the dot operator and call the value method on it in this particular example you can look at it and think well we have a very very basic example and whenever i click on it nothing really changes in this container except just the label in this button so do we really need this virtual dom and re-rendering of this component or can we even make it simpler so only if there was some way to just magically change the value in the dom and bypass the virtual dom well preact has a way of it so for very simple um, primitives like strings and uh, numbers you can actually not use the dot value method uh, you can just call the signal and it would skip the virtual DOM and directly update the value in your DOM. So in this case, you can see I click on this button and nothing really re-renders. So what exactly is happening in this case is whenever you click on it, instead of re-rendering anything, signals is actually just updating the value directly into your DOM. Well, now if you scroll to the very top and right click on signals and click on go to definition, you will see a signal code.d.ts file. You really don't have to do anything about this file, but just for your understanding, this is exactly the blueprint of the signal object which we are importing. So it has a couple of functions on it, which are computed effect and batch. So now we'll learn quickly about all these functions and let's start with computed. Let's go ahead and create another signal here called to do's. And we have two to do's here. The first one is called buy milk, which is completed false. The second one is check if subscribed. That reminds me, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to this channel. It would mean a lot to me. So with that being said, let me mark this as true. And now let's write a computed method. So for that, we first have to import computed. And now I can create a const remaining to do's So each to do will have a value which is completed. So if it's not completed, I want it to return. And finally, what I want is to get the length of this whole thing. So let's call a length method on this. So now we have this remaining to do's and let's try to just go below and print it. And something has gone wrong. Let's quickly check. Okay, I see. So now, now you can see it says that I have one remaining item to do. So here, one thing to note is this computed actually returns a signal. So the response of this 
would get recalculated every time whatever signal it is dependent on gets recalculated going on to our second method here is effect so let's quickly import effect and try to see what it exactly does so let's see effect and let's pass a function to it and let's this function called console.log and let that print the value okay so if i zoom in my console a little bit you'll be able to see you can see value of count is zero which is the initial value of this button and every time i click on it this effect would just keep on getting executed you can think of this effect function as a use effect hook which you use in react but the main difference here is you don't need to pass a dependency array to effect and the second thing is you don't really need to use this inside a component like use effect so another interesting thing to note here is that we can also cancel effects just like react so if i need to cancel this effect i would first need to name it so let's call it say dispose and at any point in our code we can just call dispose as a function and this would destroy the effect and also all subscriptions to it at this point so as you can see this code ran once and once it came to this line it executed the dispose so our effect is no longer attached so the last method we wanted to discuss is batch batch is more of a performance specific method on signals so imagine this every time you update the value of the count if your application is fairly complex a lot of other effects and computed uh, signals can be operating together so every small change can be tied with a bunch of other changes and as and when your number of signals increase these associated changes also increase so they can very quickly become costly so with batches you can batch a bunch of signal changes together let's quickly add two more signals called name and surname and also create a effect which does nothing but just a simple console log of the first name and the last name name dot value and surname dot so now you can see the full name is john doe so every time i change the name it would go through a cycle of triggering all the computed functions which depends on that particular signal and also all the effects which depends on that particular signal and this is like a chain reaction like a small signal change can trigger a bunch of things happening and as and when your app grows you can end up with a bunch of signals which trigger a whole bunch of things so just to make things simple you can tune in all these changes all these signal changes to a particular batch and how do we do that so we have this name and the surname and because it got set the effect got executed so if i want to update these two values in a batch i would i can do that inside let's say just the click handler and let's call this batch and batch is again a function and inside this function i can say name dot value equal to gene and surname dot value equal to smith and mind it this value is supposed this batch would be called every time i click on on click so now you can see this full name equal to john doe is printed for the very first time when this effect got executed and after that when i click on this button 
the value changes to Gene Smith as this batch function is executed and after that if I click on it like a million times nothing really happens because this effect would only trigger if something has changed and with that we learned everything preact signals had to offer make sure to check out the description below and let me know what you think about signals and whether you'll use it by the way next week i'm starting a series on design patterns for react.js and if that is something which interests you make sure to hit the subscribe and the bell icon and i'll see you on next monday